I'm gonna cut straight to the chase. I am dropping out of philosophy and theology so that I can study English literature instead. I'm so excited but I'm just so nervous to make this announcement and I know that sounds silly because the important thing here is that I have made the right decision but equally there's something quite daunting about sharing it because I've thought so long and hard about this decision. I haven't mentioned it once online because I wasn't sure if it would ever happen and I wasn't sure if it would be possible but I'm announcing it now because it's final. I got the confirmation email yesterday evening to say that I had officially transferred courses and so I'm gonna sit down and talk to you about my decision now. The reason that I did stop the daily university vlogs was number one. When I was told that I could transfer, I decided to still go to all of my philosophy and theology lectures and seminars until I was given the complete confirmation. I didn't want to fall behind in case anything went wrong at the last stage. So first reason, I was extremely busy with university work and as always, university work, academics always do come before YouTube. And number two, the second thing is that I wanted to properly address the fact that I'm changing courses. I didn't want it to be just randomly mentioned in one of the university vlogs. I actually wanted to talk to you about why I've decided to do it. If you've got any if you've got any questions, especially if you're thinking about transferring courses, then please do let me know in the comments. I will definitely be replying to these comments. So if you have any questions about transferring courses, how I went about logistically doing it, let's say that you are in first year or second year and you want to transfer a course and you're just not sure where to start then do let me know because I'm happy to go through that because I know that it's really daunting and it's a really scary decision to make and I know that I've made the right choice but equally I have been second guessing myself loads because it's such a massive decision. In this video I just really want to be as honest with you as I possibly can and the first thing I really do want to point out is that I am extremely nervous to make this video and I really want to express this correctly and so please just bear with me with these nerves. I don't usually get nervous about making videos. It just feels like I'm talking to a friend, you know, like I'm just chatting with friends right now. But I've been getting nervous to tell friends of mine that I've switched courses. So that's just to kind of preempt, preempt this video. I studied philosophy and theology because I love the subjects. It's the kind of degree that you do do only if you really do love the subjects because there are very few philosopher jobs, you know, outside of the academy. It, unless you want to go into you know, the priesthood or you want to you want to work clerically, theology doesn't really have. There isn't a career sitting at the end of it. It's not a it's not a facilitating degree for a particular career, and unless you're Alan Devotton and planning on being the resident philosopher at Heathrow Airport. Again, there aren't really particular philosopher jobs. There are a few, but they're quite rare and in between. So the reason I decided to do philosophy and theology is because I enjoy the subject. I love the subject. And I have loved studying them at university level. So both subjects have helped me to think about the world a little bit more carefully, just a little bit more clearly. And I know that I've benefited so much from both courses. So philosophy has taught me the building blocks of logic and as a result of that, I feel so much more confident in constructing clear, cogent, sound, valid arguments. I've got the tools to create and form those arguments, and I think that's such an important skill to have. And I've been encouraged to question things which I previously never would have questioned. Um, my favourite thing, one of my favourite things we looked at was Barclay's philosophy, and he basically said that nothing existed and that everything was an illusion. And actually my friend Natasha and I were convinced upon this idea when we were at GCSE level, so that one really resonated with me. It's incredibly interesting philosophy if you're interested in reading something and you're just starting out because it's fascinating. And theology has helped me to better navigate political discourse because at the moment so much of the political landscape is affected by religion. Religion is a focal point at the moment. So being able to apply the things that I'm learning to the real world and to real life discourse and what's happening at the moment has been fascinating. If you watched my first day of lectures vlog, I spoke about my historical Jesus module, which I'd just come out of, and I just love that, that focus on why Jesus is relevant in the modern day, kind of why it's important then for us to learn about him, because I'm, I'm a huge believer in the, the learning can help to solve the greatest problem. Education equips us with the tools to solve these dilemmas. Even though lots of people 
deem theology a throwaway subject. They say, oh, why are you studying theology? That's not very, you know, it's not, it's not important. But I completely disagree. I think theology is a really important subject because religion is so focal to our anthropology and to ourselves and our society. And so understanding it is, I think, necessary. And that hyper-awareness is something that I was really taught and really inspired to follow and consider um, because of my two RS teachers at A-level. Um, shout out to Miss Cooper and Mr McCain. And I'm very sorry that I'm dropping philosophy and theology now. So thinking just about the philosophy and theology, the thing I really want to point out to you is that I don't regret studying it at first year. No part of me thinks, I wish that I hadn't, I wish I'd gone straight into studying English. I don't see last year me studying philosophy and theology as a waste of time because I came away with such important skills and I feel like I'm more informed to do the course that I'm now doing. I loved first year. I really enjoyed it. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you might know that Learning for the sake of learning is really important to me. I really enjoy the process of learning. And so loving the course is obviously very important. And um, I did love my course last year. I loved every single theology seminar and lecture. I looked forward to them so much. And I found philosophy fascinating because who doesn't find philosophy fascinating? I loved my first year at university and I was really happy with the grade I got at the end of it. But but, and this is a big but, after much consideration, I decided that I wanted to drop out of this program so that I could pursue an academic study of English literature instead. And it's really difficult for me to articulate exactly why I've made this change because, as I've told you, I was I really did enjoy first year. That fact should be enough for me to continue into second year and third year. But there's been this almost, there's been this almost aching for English, which, I find really hard to properly articulate to you. The fact that I'm unable to communicate that is kind of, I think, why I'm most nervous to make this video because I think that people are going to assume that I've made the wrong decision and that I should have stayed studying philosophy and theology because I enjoyed it. With philosophy and theology, I enjoyed it. And yes, I found meaning in it, but there was enjoyment at its core. But with English, I almost see it, I almost see me studying it as more of a necessity. Oh no, that sounds awful. Um, I almost see studying English as something that I need to do, not just because I enjoy it, but because there's this thing which is just, the only way I can describe it is more. There's this more, this moreness to English, which I don't find in philosophy and theology. There's this, this yearning to go further when I read literature and when I read literary criticism, which I have been consistently reading over the last year. There's this yearning which I just didn't find in philosophy and theology and that yearning was something that, that yearning for, that yearning of more in English, in literature, is something which I'd experienced from quite a young age and it sounds really silly. Um, I'm not sure if any bookworms will relate with me, anyone studying English, but being able to engage in academic English literature and academic study of literature gives me a um, gives me this fulfillment and this fullness which I don't find other places. And I know this is really I'm sorry if this doesn't make any sense, but I'm just trying to communicate to you the reason why I'm doing it. And to me, it seems so so clear. My reasoning for this is just. It seems incomprehensible that I should stu continue studying philosophy and theology given the way that I feel about English. But then I know the natural question is, why didn't I study English in the first place? If I've got this internal understanding that that's the subject I have to be studying, and actually, I'm going to be completely honest with you, the whole way through last year when people would ask me, what are you studying, I'd automatically go to say, English. I'm an English student, even though I was, wasn't was actually studying English. So in terms of my identity, I was still identifying as an English student internally, even if I wasn't one. But if I knew that English was the right subject for me from the beginning, and I knew that I found so much joy and so much fulfillment and purpose in, in the academic study of literature, why didn't I do it from the beginning? And that, my friends, is a very good question and one that I've been really trying to unpick because I have been really trying to understand my decision and my 
the process of decision making when I decided to change because if you have been following my channel you might know that I did actually apply for Oxford to, to read English literature and language. So I'd also been accepted into Exeter to study English with American studies and that's basically where you take your second year abroad in America um, because I'm really interested in American literature primarily. And after I got rejected from Oxford I had this real internal crisis because Oxford was something I'd been working towards for years, it seems like. It was something which had always been on my radar, something I'd always been thinking about, something people had told me, you know, you could go to Oxford, you could study English at Oxford, and I was told by teachers that I was capable of getting into Oxford, and there was this, this pressure that I put on myself to get in, and I think I, unjustly to myself, unfairly to my younger self, in that I know that I put immense pressure on myself, and I... I invested a lot of my personal identity into that application. I wasn't applying as my academic self, as my student, I was, I was applying as my whole self. It was my heart and soul that was put into that application and, and so when I did get rejected it felt more like the end of the world and it felt a lot bigger than it, ha than it should have done. It shouldn't have felt as big to me as it did. And I'm really sorry because I know that I wasn't entirely honest about this on my channel. I did post a video on the night that I was rejected, basically explaining that I had been rejected, but I was trying to put on this hope and I was trying to put on a smile and I was trying to be positive. And that is something I was trying to do. Like, uh, post-rejection, I was trying to be positive and I was trying to be happy, but my mental health was actually really, really bad in the six months following the rejection. I will speak about that at some point. I this isn't a video, maybe I'll talk about it another time because I think it's it's important for us to share failures and important for us to be raw and authentic as students because everyone faces rejection, everyone faces failure. So why did I change courses? I think it was in the mists of post-rejection panic. And yes, it was four months after my rejection. I'd known I'd been rejected for ages, but I was still really getting over this and I'd been thinking to myself, why was it that I was rejected? I really do think that around this time of April, when I'd given myself more time to think about it, I put my, I was in this state of denial and I thought, oh, the reason they rejected me is because I didn't reply to the right course. The reason I was rejected is because I chose the wrong course and I was actually supposed to study philosophy. Because I'd also been told by teachers from, from about year eight, year nine, that I should study philosophy when I went to university. So philosophy had kind of been on my radar before. When I was in year 12, I'd done some philosophy prep, like university prep for Oxford to apply for philosophy. And so when I got rejected for English, I thought, ah, oh, that's it. The issue is that I applied for the wrong course. I was meant to apply for philosophy. So in the midst of this um, perception and this idea and this belief, I called up Exeter and I said, oh, hi, can I please change my course? to philosophy and theology from English. They said, sure, it was done within four days. And then I filmed a video saying that I had transferred courses and I'd made the right decision and everything made sense now and that it wasn't rejection, it was redirection. But now I can accept that the reason I was rejected from Oxford is because I wasn't what they were looking for. And I have grown to accept that. I can quite happily say, you know, I wasn't meant to go to Oxford. Um, now that I'm at Exeter, I'm glad I'm not at Oxford because I enjoy university life here. So in terms of the actual university at, I'm at, it worked out for the best. But in terms of the course, over this year I've realised that I did make the wrong decision. And you might be wondering why I didn't drop out sooner, why didn't I just drop out of philosophy and theology? And that's because I didn't realise I could. I was quite misinformed, no one, through no one's fault, just I assumed that I couldn't transfer I, and I didn't want to have to drop out and then I hadn't planned a gap year I didn't want to drop out halfway through halfway through the year and then not have anything planned for the rest of the year that was really daunting to me so I just stuck it out and I just stayed there and then over the summer I was thinking a lot and I realized it just occurred to me you know I could redo first year I could drop out of philosophy and theology and I could study English literature instead and once I had that idea in my mind I couldn't stop thinking about it and it was just this hope, it was this undeniable like wow this is it, this is what I need to do and it just seemed so clear to me that that was, that was the right option and that's what I should do. I decided to study English and the reason I want to study English, I do think that philosophy and theology feed into many if not all avenues of human life but I view English as 
a kind of metaphors to this. It's rooted, yes, in anthropology because writing says so much about the culture that you live in, it says so much about the individual who's writing and about the reader as well, but I really do think that it, almost, it does act as this metaphors and that it's able to articulate and deepen an understanding of humanity which I don't think we can achieve any other way. I think literature is the best way for us to understand ourselves because everything's a story. You're a story, I'm a story. <laughs> and literature coaches the humanities as well, that's the thing. I mean, I enjoy studying philosophy and theology, but studying English doesn't mean that I have to give up both of those studies, those disciplines, because every paper by Barclay and Descartes and Locke and Hobbes, they're all, that's all literature. Their papers are literature. And the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, that's literature. Yes, okay, I hope that that all makes sense. That's why I've decided to change. But the other thing that I really do need to point out, and which I think is so important for me to point out in this video, is that me being able to change, I am really lucky and privileged to be in the position where I can change. Because I'm redoing first year, so effectively I'm paying for an extra year of university. And luckily I can still get the student loan, that was one of the first things I checked with all this. Um, I can still get the student loan because the because Student Finance England has um, like a safety year, I don't know what it's called, I think it's called a safety year, where if you do think you've chosen the wrong course or you want to transfer universities, etc., you can still be in receipt of the loan for an extra year. And I suppose that's also partly because there are some four year courses, you know, if you do um, a language, then you'll study abroad for a year. So the Student Finance will cover me for the extra year, which is really great. But equally, even though I will be given the loan, it's a loan, which means I do have to pay it back after university. And that is a cross I will have to bear when I leave university. But I know that I'm in a really privileged position in the very fact that I can financially bear that when I do leave university. And that I don't have to continue with philosophy and theology because I'm in the privileged position of being able to take out a loan for another year and then pay that back. I know that I'm in a privileged position to have this choice and to be able to exercise this decision of changing my degree subject and studying something which I know that I'm going to love and cherish even more. I am really lucky for that and I know that not everyone has that option. And you know the other thing which I do want to quickly point out before the end of this video? One of the reasons I've been dreading making this video, literally since, I, since it first occurred to me that I wanted to change, it's been on my mind that I'm going to have to make this video and I'm going to have to sit down and say that I'm effectively dropping out of my degree. And there's this huge stigma surrounding dropping out and I think that stigma is really uncalled for. I think it's really important that we try and put a stop to it. Because I mean, one of the reasons, as I said, one of the reasons I didn't want to drop out last year and change and wait a year and change courses is because I didn't like that stigma of dropping out of university. I didn't want to be a dropout. And I think that's really bad because sometimes opportunities come along or we realise that we've made the wrong decision and we should be able to drop out and pursue something which is more relevant to us without having judgment and without people making assumptions about you. And I know this is something, like a few people have actually messaged me about this and expressed their concerns with this. You know, people saying, I want to drop out of university, but I'm so afraid of what everyone is going to say and what everyone's going to think. I don't know how we can get over that stigma, but I think one of the steps, one of the steps, one of the necessary steps is talking about it. And that's what I wanted to do today. You know, I'm, I'm saying I'm effectively a dropout. I've dropped out of my course and I've done that because there is something better and something I want to do more, which is English. And I cannot tell you how excited I am for it. I am literally buzzing with excitement. I wake up in the morning and I'm so excited and so happy. It's, it's like this huge rejuvenation. It's like I've been sleeping and I've just woken up and there's this whole world and that sounds so cheesy, I know, but it's true. At the moment, we're reading Home is the Odyssey, and honestly, this is amazing. This translation, if you are going to read the Odyssey, read the Emily Wilson translation, and think about it in terms of, like, compare it to other translations, because she's the first woman to translate this. Her, her style is so rhythmic. It reads, like, it reads, like, quite modern literature, actually. I'm loving every single second of 
the lectures and seminars and every second that I'm studying and even though I did enjoy the, the studying and reading that I did last year, it wasn't like this. The kind of enjoyment that I'm getting from studying at the moment, you know, sitting at my desk and studying in my room, is akin to the kind that I had when I was doing my A-levels and that boost of motivation and that just absolute love and interest in what I'm doing is just, I can't tell you how refreshing it is and how much I'm loving it. So I know that I've made the right decision and for me, that is the most important thing. Um, I know this is a really big change. I've been really nervous about sharing it. So um, yes, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm sure this is a pretty long video, so I'm very sorry. I, I had envisaged this video as being two, three minutes long, but I think, I think it's probably around 40 minutes of, of footage. Thank you for watching. Good luck with, I hope the academic year is going well for you. Um, good luck with everything coming up this week, next week everything exciting, let me know something exciting and interesting that you're doing at school at the moment. I'm really interested to know what you're enjoying learning and have a productive week. Bye.